Hi everyone and welcome back to my channel. My name is Caroline and today we are going to be talking about a very popular question in physics, particularly in the field of hydrostatics. And this question is, what is the relationship between the density of a block and the ratio of that block submerged in a certain type of fluid? On my screen here, you can see that I've drawn out a cylinder. This is representing my beaker full of water, which is denoted by that blue circle within the beaker. And the relationship is written out. So it is going to be the density of your block divided by the density of the fluid is going to equal the volume of the submerged portion of your block divided by the volume of your entire block. And so just to preface this video, I know that a lot of physics is memorization of formulas. And when I was learning about this hydrostatic concept, I kept getting the numerator and the denominator mixed up because I didn't really understand the fundamental concepts behind it. And so I really want to just take this video and explain the derivation of this formula and how we, we can use our forces and our previous physics knowledge to actually understand this formula without being taught it explicitly. So now I'm going to actually draw in our submerged block. It's not going to be fully within the liquid. It's going to be partially in and partially out, right? So it's some part of it is submerged, some part of it is still above the water. And so now that we've drawn out our block with the submerged parts shaded in and labeled, I want to ask you to take a few seconds and think about what forces are acting on this system. So the first force, and I think maybe the more obvious of the two forces that we're going to be working with today, is going to be the force of gravity. And the force of gravity is going to be pointing downwards. So we know that the force of gravity, based on our previous physics experience, is going to be the mass of the block, and this is the mass of the entire block, times the acceleration due to gravity, and that is represented by little g. So perfect, great job if you got that. And what is the other force that we're looking at here? We know that there has to be some sort of force counteracting the force of gravity, right? Otherwise, the block would just be accelerating downwards into the water, which we know is not happening because it's floating. So there is going to be this force called the buoyant force, and you might have heard about something called buoyancy. And we're going to represent this as F sub B. So the buoyant force is going to be equal to the mass of the displaced water times the acceleration due to gravity. And this is similar to the force of gravity that we just saw. You're gonna have your mass times your acceleration, and this is exactly what we have with the buoyant force. But what's another way to write the mass of the displaced water? I think in this case, since water is a liquid, it might even be easier to rewrite this equation using some sort of liquid measurements, like the density or the volume. And so we can do exactly that. So I'm going to write down the density equation that we know. So density equals mass divided by volume. And if we just want to rearrange this equation, we will get our mass equals our density times our volume. And in this case, it will then be the density of the water times the volume of the water displaced. Because only the volume of the water displaced is going to contribute to this point force. And don't forget, we have to multiply that by little g, which is the acceleration due to gravity, because we have that in our original force formula. And here's another super important point for this question. Take a look again at the volume of the water displaced. What would the volume of the water displaced have to be equal to? And take a few seconds or pause the video here to think about that. If you said that the volume of the water displaced had to be equal to the volume of the block submerged, you are 100% correct and great job. In this way, we can kind of relate the volume of the water to the volume of the block submerged. And in that way, we're getting one step closer to actually reaching our relationship between the density of the block and the volume submerged. Looking at this diagram, we see that our force of gravity counteracts our buoyant force and that the acceleration of this system is going to be zero. So we can write out, and I really like to always write out my F net equation. So my net force is going to be equal to my mass times acceleration. And so in this case, I'm just gonna make my force of gravity pointing in the downwards direction. And I'm just gonna say that this downwards direction is positive and label it on my diagram. You could also label the buoyant force as going in the positive direction and label the gravity as going in the negative direction, but it really wouldn't matter for this equation since they're both going to be equal. So I'm going to write that the force of gravity minus the buoyant force is equal to the mass times acceleration, and we already said before that the acceleration is going to be zero 
because the block is not actually moving. We know that the force of gravity is going to be the mass of the entire block times the acceleration due to gravity. We already defined that before. And we are going to subtract from that the buoyant force, which is going to be the density of our water times the volume of water displaced times, again, the acceleration due to gravity. And we know that this is going to be equal because the block is not moving. So for the next step, I'm just going to move my entire buoyant force term to the other side. And we see now we have a little g on both sides, and we can just cross those out because we can divide both sides by that. And now we see that the relationship that we're left with is that the mass of the block is equal to the density of water times the volume of water displaced. And so how are we going to get from this equation to our desired equation? Well, remember how we talked about the relationship between density and mass and volume? We can do the same here. And let me just rewrite the density equation. I'm going to write density equals mass divided by volume. And we can again isolate for mass. So mass is going to equal your density times your volume. And so pause this video here and think about what we can do with this relationship to relate the density of the block, the density of water, and any volume terms we have in the equation. All right, so let's just rewrite that in terms of what we have now. So the mass of the block is going to equal the density of the block times the volume of the entire block. And I just want to make that point clear that we're talking about the entire block and not just the volume of the part that is submerged. So perfect. And now we can say that this is equal to the density of the water times the volume of water displaced like we had written in the equation that we highlighted pink. And think about what the volume of water displaced means. Remember we said that the volume of water displaced is actually equal to the volume of the block submerged? Well, here is the perfect place to integrate that crucial piece of information. So let's rewrite this equation in terms of what we now know. So we're going to see that the density of the block times the volume of the entire block is equal to the density of water times the volume of the block submerged. And let's see what a little bit of rearranging of this equation can do. I'm going to isolate the densities on one side and put the volumes on the other side. And now we see that we have the density of the block divided by the density of water is equal to the volume of the block submerged divided by the volume of the entire block. And so if we take a look at the term on the right side of the equation, that is going to be equal to the fraction or the ratio of our block submerged. Now let's look at a couple of really quick examples just to show you how the numbers work out. So let's take this beaker. I'm filling it with a certain type of liquid. And I'm telling you that it is 95% submerged in this certain type of liquid. Now if I tell you that this liquid is water, we can work with our numbers. The density of water is going to be 1.0 grams per milliliters. And so if I tell you that it's 95% submerged, what is going to be its density? And take a second here and pause the video to figure that out. The density of the block is going to be 0.95 grams per mil based on the equations that we just derived. And this also makes sense too, right? Because if the density of the block is less than the density of water, it will float. If you have something like a bowling ball or something that's very dense, a lot denser than water, if you put it in water, it's going to sink. Let's take a look at another example. In this case, this block is going to only be 10% submerged in water. And so take a quick pause here to determine what is the density of this block. All right, so if you said that the density of the block is 0.10 grams per mil, you are correct and congratulations. This makes sense because the density of your block is way less than the density of water. It's only 10% of the density of water. And so because of that, you're going to see that only a little bit of it is going to be submerged and that the majority of the block is actually going to be on top of the water. So great job, everyone, and thank you for staying until the end of the video. I hope you learned a lot, and I'm just going to zoom out so we get a full view of what is going on here. It's a lot of derivation, but I hope that this helps you to understand the relationship, and so will help you to remember the relationship between the density of a block and the ratio of it submerged. So thank you again for watching, and I will see you in the next video.